I could not help myself. I put the 9800X3D inside of my Velka 3 build. This is using a four liter chassis and a low profile cooler, which is a respectable cooler in its own right, but a far cry from the liquid coolers I typically use for CPU reviews and high-end builds. So we're gonna do some heavy undervolting on this chip today, as well as on its predecessor, the 7800X3D, to see how the two stack up in a case so small, you'd be hard pressed to fit a severed foot in there. <laughs> Believe me, I've tried. Before we continue, this video is sponsored by cdkeyoffer.com. The retail version of Windows 11 Pro costs $200. <gasps> but what if I told you you could get it for just 31 bucks? You'd say, in this economy? Make it cheaper. Lucky for you, CD Key Offer is having their Black Friday sale. Just enter BW20 at checkout for 25% off any order. That brings Windows 11 Pro down to just $23. Yeah, but some people hate Windows 11, understandably. How about Windows 10 Pro? Enter code BW20 at checkout and boom, Windows 10 Pro for just $17. You can't even buy your family Starbucks with that. These keys are safe and reliable. I've been using them for years. The checkout process is super quick and you receive your key immediately after purchase. Activating Windows successfully has never been easier or cheaper. Code BW20 at checkout also works on all Office products like Microsoft Office 2019 that you can cop for a mere $53. All software products on the site are on sale right now, so click the link in the description to check them out and don't miss these wild once a year deals on cdkeyoffer.com. If you happen to catch the original video I did on my Belka 3 build, you might recall that it was rocking a 7950X3D, 96 gigs of DDR5 5600 speed RAM, and an RTX 4060 Ti from Palit. Apart from swapping out the processor with the two that we'll be testing today, the specs of this system have not changed. However, since we're using an RTX 4060 Ti, which is far less powerful than the RTX 4090 that I typically use to create a CPU bottleneck scenario, which allows us to really see the difference in gaming performance performance between chips, we are not going to see a huge difference in gaming performance between these CPUs today. This would be a different story if we were using a bigger case that could fit a faster GPU, but currently the RTX 4060 Ti is the fastest card that fits inside of 4-liter cases like this one for now. NVIDIA's 5000 series is probably right around the corner, and then we've got AMD's response to that pretty soon, so within a few months potentially we may be able to fit a faster GPU inside of this case once and for all, and at that point I may do a revisitation of this particular test because then things could get really interesting. If you want to see raw gaming performance, you can go watch my original 9800X3D review, but in this video, what we're really going to be measuring between the 7800X3D and 9800X3D are the differences in their undervolting capabilities, thermal resistance, and their clock speeds uh, that they're able to achieve under these conditions. When undervolting our 7800X3D, I was able to achieve just a minus 15 on the curve optimizer within PBO2, which isn't great. It's not terrible, it's just very average. On the other hand, my 9800X3D is a total beast and was able to hit minus 40. I actually made a mistake in my original review of this chip. I assumed that the cap for curve optimizer was minus 30, as it is with the Ryzen 7000 series uh, and generations before it. But Ryzen 9000 can go down to minus 50, so I was actually very surprised and impressed when I was able to hit minus 40 while still maintaining rock solid stability on the 9800X3D. And this is always the tricky part when it comes to comparing CPUs or GPUs in the context of undervolting or overclocking, is that there is quite a bit of luck to it. I mean, it's all luck at that point because you're dealing with a silicon lottery where some chips are great, some chips aren't, and uh, that's going to heavily determine what your chip is capable of, how far you can push it, whether that means uh, increasing the clock speeds or lowering the voltage and still maintaining stability. And here are the benefits we're seeing from the undervolts that we just did. If we take a look at our Cyberpunk run, this is just the CAN benchmark that's built into the game. At 1080p, the 7800X3D when undervolted was pulling 57 watts on average with just the CPU package power. We're not looking at total system draw, just the CPU. Whereas the 9800X3D stock was pulling quite a bit more than that. As we've seen from uh, other reviews, my own review, uh, it is a power hungry chip when it's running stock. And so 75 watts average is quite a bit higher than the 7800X3D, but when we undervolt that, we bring it all the way down to just 56 watts. That's not only a huge drop over stock, but also a slight improvement over the 7800X3D. And this is being reflected with the temperatures as well. 76C was the average temperature we got on the 7800X3D undervolted, while we saw an average temp of 84C with a stock 9800X3D. That's eight degrees warmer. 
When undervolting that chip, we see it drop to 73C, which is, uh, what is that, 11 degrees cooler than stock and actually three degrees cooler than the 7800X3D. Clock speed with the 7800X3D averaged 4,781 megahertz, while we saw a consistent 5,225 megahertz with the 9800X3D both at stock and undervolted. This falls in line with the chip's rated boost clock of 5.2 gigahertz. And as you can see here, we're, we're eking out an extra 25 megahertz, just as a fun little bonus. And then I also did run the same test at 4K, the Cyberpunk run at 4K, just because uh, I, wanna, I wanna show how the CPUs behave as you scale up the resolution. I think it's, it's very easy to think that when you go from 1080p to 4K, that your CPU is immediately gonna start running hotter and it's gonna draw more power. But that's not always the case because now we're in a more GPU bound scenario where the, the GPU has to render a lot more pixels and the, the CPU simply doesn't have to work quite as hard. And so we're seeing that here with the CPU package power just averaging 44 watts on the 7800X3D uh, undervolted. That's a huge drop already. The 9800X3D is actually on par with that because it's not being utilized like it was earlier. But we can reduce it even further with that undervolt, bringing it all the way down to 36 watts. Uh, who would have thought the fastest gaming CPU in the world is just sipping 36 watts on average running Cyberpunk at 4K, but here we are. And the CPU temperatures are looking really good as well. 7800X3D at 68C on average. The 9800X3D stock is averaging 73C, which is already perfectly fine. But with a quick undervolt, we're dropping it to 67C. Uh, that's a six degree reduction over stock and a one degree reduction over the 7800X3D. And on a quick side note, you can see how the CPU power and temperatures increase in the later half of the run. You can see that bump on the right side. And we saw this consistent with, with the last slide as well at 1080p. That's because of the nature of the benchmark run. So in the benchmark run for Cinebench or for, for Cyberpunk, uh, we see that in the later half of it, the, the camera points up towards the sky where it's a lot easier for the GPU to render frames than on ground level where there's a lot of textures. And so with the GPU kind of taking a back seat and just kind of kicking its heels up, uh, you can see that the, the, the CPU has to work quite a bit harder. And that's why we're seeing a spike at that point uh, in terms of the, the power consumption and temperatures. Clock speed on the 7800X3D is averaging 4,403 megahertz, more or less 4.4 gigahertz there, uh, with an average of 4,754 megahertz on the 9800X3D running stock. And don't be fooled with the position of the text here, uh, but when we undervolted that same chip, we actually saw a slight uptick over stock to 4,793 megahertz. As I mentioned, we're gonna see very similar results in gaming performance between these two CPUs because we're simply GPU bound for most of the time. In Time Spy Extreme, the 9800X3D is seeing a slight bump over the 7800X3D, but it's by a slight margin. Uh, similarly, in Cyberpunk 2077, these results are very similar across the board. This is all three resolutions shown, 1080, 1440p and 2160p. And interestingly, the 7800X3D is edging out its successor ever so slightly here, eking out a couple extra frames in its average in 1% lows, uh, but it's nothing significant. This is gonna mean no change, no significant change in your actual experience. We see a similar trend in Forza 5, very neck and neck, maybe one or two frame difference here and there. That's all chalked up to margin of error as well. And uh, just a true testament to how fast this little system is, being able to average over 100 FPS at 4K in Forza 5, I will take it. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, same sort of deal here. We did see a dip, oddly enough, with the 1% lows at 1080p. Uh, the 9800X3D just fell a little bit short there, but picked it up elsewhere. But special shout out to both CPUs for the average frame rates that they were able to achieve at 4K. 69 all around, baby, let's go. So up until this point, both CPUs are very similar. Gaming performance is virtually identical. Power consumption and temperatures are more or less the same if you're undervolting both chips. But where things really start to split apart is when you look outside of that vacuum of just gaming and you look at single thread and more so multi-thread performance. Here in Cinebench, you can see that the undervolted 9800X3D is already pulling ahead of itself quite a bit in the multi-threaded test, but it's scoring 30% higher than the 7800X3D, which is just Phenomenal. Single thread performance does see some, some uplift as well, but it's nowhere near as pronounced. So this goes to show that if you're doing any task where the GPU is not involved, you're just doing multi-threaded workloads, video editing, rendering, you're using Blender, stuff like that, streaming, then you really do see a significant edge with the 9800X3D and its ability to just run those cores at higher frequencies for sustained uh, periods of time. 
So there you have it. This was admittedly a very niche use case scenario. It's not gonna apply to many people, but for those of you who are planning a, a similar small form factor build, or maybe you live in a really hot part of the world where cooling your CPU is very difficult, hopefully this sheds some light on how you can expect it to behave under those conditions. If you'd like me to test the 9800X3D in any other scenarios that you can think of, feel free to give me some suggestions. I'm completely open to ideas. Just uh, leave it in the comments below. I'll check them out. Apart from that though, thank you very much for watching this video. Toss a like on it if you enjoyed it. Get subscribed for more tech content on the way, and I will see you guys in the next video.